Okay, welcome back. We're on to problem number five, and this looks like a pretty easy problem, and it is in many ways, but you just have to make sure you get the wording right. And the point of this problem is you want to make the distinction between an increase in demand and an increase in quantity demanded. Sounds like a minor difference, but it's very important because you get very different results. So here it says here, an increase in quantity demanded. An increase in quantity demanded. So all I really have to do is just draw a demand curve. Here's Q. We'll call this P0. We'll call this Q0. All right? And now they're saying, what's an increase in quantity demanded? Well, an increase in quantity demanded it's going to push us out here. It's a movement along the demand curve from Q0 to Q1. That's an increase in quantity demanded. Right? I want to contrast that with an increase in demand. If I said, what about an increase in demand, it would have caused the demand curve to shift out. This is an increase in demand. This we'll call this D1. And to keep things nice, we'll call this D0. This is an increase in demand. This is an increase in quantity demanded. The quantity demanded moves along the demand curve. A sh an increase in demand causes the whole curve to shift out. Look at our answers now. It says, results in a movement downward and to the right along a fixed demand curve. Results in a movement downward and to the right of a fixed demand curve. Absolutely correct. All right. So A is going to be our answer, but let's make sure you understand why. B, results in a movement upward and to the left along a fixed demand curve results in a movement upward and to the left. Well, that would be a decrease in quantity demanded. Can't be. Can't be the right answer. But here's the kicker, right? Shifts the demand curve to the left. Well, no, we know that's not going on. But D could have tricked you up. It would have said, shift the demand curve to the right. That is a shift in the demand curve to the right. That's exactly correct. But that's not an increase in quantity demanded. That's an increase in demand. And the reason this becomes important, and the reason why I kind of pound away at it, because now if I were to draw a supply curve in here, all right, let's say I draw a supply curve here at S0, all right? The increase in demand would unambiguously raise the price, okay? Now you get an equilibrium quantity increasing from here, from here, to something like this. That's true, but it's going to be associated with an increase in price. But when there's an increase in quantity demanded, caused, in this particular case, by a shift in supply. So if supply shifts out from S0 to S1, and new equilibrium goes from here to here, you get a movement along the demand curve caused by the decrease in price. But the decrease in price is caused by the shift in supply. All right? So that's a, we call this an increase in supply resulting in an increase in quantity demand. The increase in supply lowers price and causes people to move along their demand curves to where the new intersection occurs between the new supply curve, the increased supply curve, whoop, I should label this one, and the original demand curve. All right? So again, the distinction between shifts in demand and supply and changes in quantity demand that are quantity supplied is more than just semantic. It actually helps you kind of understand what's going on. Because one final point, this is associated with an increase in price. This is associated with a decrease in price. And that's why it matters. All right. That gets us through the first five. We'll come back and do the second five uh, in a minute. Why don't you take a look at number six, and I'll return. Thanks.